I would like to relate this over to a recent conversation in which we discuss William Walker Atkinson's work. I'll put a link in the description to that video. And so in relation to that video, the premise shall be the following. He says, I shall use the term mental fascination. It is a sense of action that powerfully influences the imagination of another. I'm a fan of performing arts. I enjoy watching shows. And I rarely pass up an opportunity if someone were to suggest it to see a show, provided that I have within my schedule the availability. And one of the reasons why I enjoy performing arts is because the ability to stimulate imagination through creative expression, arts, is a deep fascination of mine. I see this as relationship with invisible counsel. Napoleon Hill discussed this in Think and Grow Rich. Carl Jung referred to this as active imagination in which you can have conversations with yourself, aspects of yourself. We're going to talk about this in a moment. Or we can have conversations with those that we imagine to have attributes that we want to further integrate within ourselves. The vividness of our imagination seems to play out in our mind's eye a theatrical experience of interaction in which we reconcile to a deeper degree. This is very much related to the ability to, as he says here, the best suggestionists are those who have acquired the suggestive manner, which is developed by the exercise of authoritative utterances and commands, the physical appearance, manner, and tones arising from a reflection of the mental state within. So either projected in our mind's eye, the theater of the mind, or expressed into form in relationship with others. We want to relate this to together because what we find is that the vividness of our imagination of how we see ourselves to be automatically expresses, as he says here, utterances, commands, physical appearance, manner, tones, arising from a reflection of the mental state within. So this mental state within is reflecting as the experiences that we have with each other. It plays out in what we say, how we say, our body language, etc. And from a third-party perspective, this would reveal the person's degree of what we would call magnetism, charisma, self-confidence, or any other label that we would use to define. And these definitions can be very subjective, something that we would relate over to influence. These individuals are self-persuaded that their reality really is the way that it is. And anything that a person would suggest to them that it isn't that way, they would find their own way of interpreting what that person says as something that is in harmony with how they see themselves to be in their vision. This would translate into their ability to easily overcome rejection, objection, and so forth. So he says there are five classes of suggestion. Suggestion of authority, suggestion of association, suggestion of habit, suggestion of repetition, suggestion of imitation. And these are the ways that we suggest to ourselves in relation to five sensory experiences that are forming our self-image. Number one, the suggestion of authority in which a person interprets a person of perceived authority of information in which they would identify with, some of these conclusions may be true to how they actually are, or they might not be. Ultimately, we are suggesting to ourselves, although now we are becoming more conscious and aware that we're doing this. Number two is the suggestion of association. So, for example, let's relate this over to magnetism. Now, the associations are in relation to body language, what a person says, the vibe, the associations to another person. If a person looks at us a certain way, it can, through our own thinking patterns, bring us into a state of mind in which we feel self-confidence, or any other state of mind for that matter. Or it can bring us into a state of mind where we might experience ourselves as low self-esteem, in which we feel less than and so forth. These are all interpretations within ourselves which we can discover 
in which a person forms conclusions about themselves, self-image, in which these self-image components are revealing the ability or the degree a person can maintain a selected state of mind, in which from there, that state of mind automatically expresses as utterances, commands, physical appearance, manner, and tones, in which the other individual or individuals are stimulated in their imagination and enter into that state as well. This is one of the reasons why I love performing arts. The experience stimulates my own imagination. So we see this. Somebody who performs in a way that the audience loses themselves in their performance, the individuals or the audience notice that their imagination starts to, you could say, take control. They might find themselves inspired to do different things, or it might awaken within them certain desires that they have as a result of the experience that they're having while they are engaging with the performance. So thus, let's go back here. I shall use the term mental fascination. It is the sense of action that powerfully influences the imagination of another. Now, in regards to instant magnetism, we look at it from the perspective of we change ourselves or we get into the state of mind that is ideal or a specific state of mind in which it expresses as the reflection of that performances, the utterances, the commands, the physical appearances. And while someone can do those things, learn those things, I found in many years working with many performing artists masterful, influential communicators, that they share a commonality, and that is this self-image where the reality that they believe is the reality plays out. Others seem to play out the theater of that conviction of that inward reality. Let's say this individual who is very self-persuaded that their reality is the way that it is. They operate from a high degree of self-confidence. They listen to their intuition. They think for themselves. They're able to discern based on suggestion of authority. If someone shows up, who many might consider a perceived authority, and that's the key, perceived authority, they're able to, from their own internal, form conclusions about this conversation that's happening or presentation, etc. And a lot of times they'll see it from the perspective of, this is somehow in harmony and contribution to my goal, my vision, who I am. And they're able to maintain that state of mind. And as they remain in that interaction with the person, what we'll notice is that the person of authority will start to reflect more so the other person because the person A has the suggestive manner, which is a reflection of the state within. So one can look at that and say, it's their utterances. It's what they said. It's their physical appearance, their manner. And while that can be helpful, to do some of those things, as we have done this many times in sales. You say certain things, and it seems to increase the sales conversions. What we notice is far more effective is to enter into and maintain a state of mind in which those utterances, words, body language, tonality, etc., are authentic expressions. We find that to be far more influential, and we notice that others around them see that person as magnetic, charismatic, influential. Next is suggestion of association. So this is where a person forms associations. So this is where we can have a lot of fun with this because what a person says, their body language, their voice tonality, all these things are revealing what we are concluding in ourselves about ourselves in relation to that person. For example, a person might give you a certain look and this certain look would appear to disempower you. It would appear that this person is giving you this look to disempower you. And our own internal interpretation or suggestion to association in relation to that body language is determining our state of mind that we enter into. So someone who is highly magnetic, let's say, will look at whatever body language or whatever and still maintain their flow, their state of mind. They'll still be able to do it. Now, why is it? A lot of times we see these individuals have reconciled through the journey. They've recognized that they have formed interpretations to that particular body language. And this interpretations that they have been forming have been breaking their flow, switching their states of mind during sales, during presentation, during leadership, in relationships, etc. And they now found that thinking pattern and they've made peace with it. 
they change those thinking patterns and they now find themselves automatically operating and maintaining that state of mind that's ideal. Body language that another person presents to them could be invoking certain interpretations in regards to shame, anger, fear. And these are thinking patterns. And we want to ask ourselves, are these true and valid in relation to this experience? And if we find that they're not true and valid in relation to the experience, we can change them. Then we have suggestion of habit. As we go through our day-to-day -day experiences, we may repeat to ourselves the same interpretations. Let's use the body language, for example. Someone looks at you a certain way, and as a result of them looking at you, you feel shame. Now, we want to note this because we want to ask ourselves, if this brings us into a shame-based state of mind, how would it adjust our manners, what we say, and so forth? And how would it relate to the interaction with the person? Would that be considered an ideal interaction? something a person would want to continue. Now, all throughout a person's day, they might be having these different experiences where they're experiencing the same body language or the same words a person says in many shapes and form. And continuously, even if they bring themselves into a state of mind that's desirable, dropping into different states of mind as a result of those associations. Those are what I sometimes say, that which we subconsciously or unconsciously say, I am too. We want to identify those thinking patterns and do the subconscious mind work. Then we have suggestion of repetition. So a person might come across the same information all the time. You're not good enough. You should be ashamed of yourself. And maybe in the earlier stages, they're not accepting that. And they're saying, you know what? I'm not going to listen to that. But perhaps the constant, as William Walker Atkinson had also articulated, the constant dripping of the water, wearing away the stone, a person starts to believe that suggestion. This is why it's very important to surround yourself with information and environments that encourage you, which includes the external and internal self-talk and suggestion in relation to. And if you're in environments that there's a lot of encouragement through the suggestion of habit association and even authoritative figures in that environment who are encouraging, a person allows those suggestions to become their own. The next is suggestion of imitation. Imitation in schools of philosophies, etc. As I've been encouraging, we want to think for ourselves. We want to go into our intuition and we want to form our own thinking conclusions about ourselves that are based on how we truly are from the perspective of love and in relation to instant magnetism, how you actually want to be. Because when these conclusions have been formed and the self-image has been formed or reformed, let's say, back to how it truly is, your authentic self, what you notice is all of this is automatic. The suggestive manner, as he says, authoritative utterances, commands, physical appearance, manner, tones, voice tonality, all these things are authentic and true to how you are. And you'll find yourself automatically as a result of transcending the inaccurate thinking identification symbolically represented as prosperous relationships in your life. And you'll notice you'll be more at peace and ease because within yourself, the thinking patterns that are true and accurate to how you really are are suggested to yourself. And that is expressed as the magnetism that seems to reflect as the ideal in relationships in interactions and so forth. Because what you've been doing is you've been letting go of these thinking patterns, these suggestions that have been formed for whatever the reason may be and identifying with the true and accurate suggestions of how you actually are. And this mental fascination is experienced by others. For example, let's take the performing artist. The performing artist has developed their skill, dance, whatever it may be. Simultaneously, they've been letting go of inaccurate thinking patterns of how they are not. And they find themselves performing so powerfully, we could say, that it influences the imagination of the audience, inspires them, stimulates them, and encourages them to, from a very deep place, be how they truly want to be. This is the power. This magnetism is also experienced in the performing arts, in day-to-day -day life, in personal relationships, business relationships, etc. This is an authentic way of being. We discover within ourselves our true and accurate thinking patterns of how we actually are, and we encourage them. And speaking about theater, let's talk about theater of the mind. So William Walker Atkinson has this 
concept here, inner conscious helpers. He says, many of you have heard the old fairy tales and bits of folklore relating to the kindly brownies or good fairies who feeling affection for and gratitude toward some poor tailor or cobbler who had befriended them would come at night when the workman and his family were asleep and taking up the unfinished work that had been left on the table or bench would work diligently at it so that when the morning sun rose, the worker from his slumber would find his unfinished tasks completed. The little hands, the brownies, would have fashioned the leather into shoes, then stitched and pegged them. The cloth would be cut and made into garments. The pieces of wood would be made into boxes, chests, furniture, chairs, etc. The rough material had been prepared by the workmen during the day. The brownies would do the rest. But what has all this to do with the inner consciousness, you may ask? Just this, that in the inner consciousness of each of us, there are forces which act much the same as would countless tiny mental brownies or helpers who are anxious and willing to assist us in our mental work. If we will but have confidence and trust in them. No, this is no fairy tale. It is by a psychological truth expressed in the terms of the old fairy tale. And so he gives an example of how we could work with this. And so what I've done to work with this that has been very powerful in a very theatrical way because I want my imagination to be more vivid. Thus, I've been further working with the exercises from the Master Key System. I'll put a link in the description to that video. And I found that my life has become a lot more theatrical. My experiences each day, they've become more play-like, movie-like, theatrical-like. And I notice people seem to show up as symbolic representations of what's going on in my own mind, playing out the theater that was going on in my own mind. And this is so much fun because life has become playful to a higher degree, more childlike. And that's why I love the performing arts because I found for me this was encouraged to a higher degree when I checked out more shows. And so I'm looking forward to actually check out more shows this year. And we could do this in our own imagination where you have individuals that embody certain attributes in which you want to integrate within yourself. And you can imagine them, roundtable conversation, having a conversation with each other before going to sleep. Ideally, we would do this in state akin to sleep when we're more in a theta brainwave, which allows the imagination to become more lucid and vivid. And we have conversations with them. And via our own imagination, the infinite world of imagination, the insights and perspectives start to be revealed. Now, I've done this with aspects within myself that I've personified as characters that represent shame, fear, desire, courage, and I have conversations with them. It's a wonderful thing. Imagine having a conversation in your own imagination with a personified character, our own attributes, which you've been identifying with, and it's a fun conversation. It's a beautiful room, beautiful furniture. Everyone is dressed really well. We're sitting down. We're all having a glass of wine. I'm having conversations with them and I'm making peace with these attributes. I may say things like, you know, I've been identifying with these thinking patterns in regards to shame in which I was blaming you for it. I was saying that you have control over me. And the individualized personification of shame would say, yeah, I know it could appear that way. Although that wasn't the case and the conversation would continue. And I'd say, what are other ways that it could show up so I could be more aware if it's showing up in my day-to-day life? And the conversation would reveal it to me. And through this conversation that may go on for like 10, 15, 20 minutes, I notice a deep level of peace as I have made peace with that attribute. And then what I notice is that when I'm interacting with people in those situations where I would interpret body language, for example, from the perspective of anger or fear, I no longer would experience it because I had accepted the suggestion of my theater in mind. And automatically so because this is a relationship with the subconscious mind as we talked about in the videos last week. I'll put a link in the description to those videos. The theater is playing out. Both the conscious and subconscious is constructing a theater in my mind vividly. There's intent there to reconcile and the reconciliation occurs. And so to emphasize, he says, perhaps the best way for the majority of persons is to get as clear an idea of what you really want to know as possible. 
as clear an idea or mental image of the question you want answered. So the notes that we take every day of these different theaters that play out in body language behavior in regards to how we relate to each other, which seems to, from our own thinking patterns within, switch our states of mind. We note these things down and can see it for how it truly is, turn them into accurate and true auto-suggestions, which again are received within the intuition. Or we could do a process like this, which again is working with the subconscious mind and intuition to embody how we actually are as a result of reconciling within. He says, perhaps the best way for the majority of persons is to get as clear an idea of what you really want to know as possible, as clear an idea or mental image of the question you want answered. And then, after rolling it around in your mind, give it a higher degree of voluntary attention. Then we say, pass it on to the inner conscious planes with the mental request. Attend to this for me, work out the answer, and then report to me. This may be made silently or aloud if you wish. Speak to your inner conscious workers just as you would to people, firmly but kindly. This is one of the key distinctions. I found that by creating this theatrical experience in my mind in which everyone is sitting down having a glass of wine and, there, and these different aspects are personified as characters, I'm actually interested in having a fun, flow-based, inspiring, stimulating conversation in which we reconcile. I genuinely believe they want to reconcile. And he says, and then this is an important point. You must accompany the order with an earnest expectation that your will will be carried out. The clearer your belief, the better will be the result. And I actually have some notes here that I pulled from working with this process that I'd like to share. So in those conversations, what was revealed some of the notes, I encourage others to be how they really want to be. Upon transcending the inaccurate thinking identification, the symbolically prosperous relationships show up. Others reveal the degree of self-acceptance. I focus on making my flow a priority and the world seems to rearrange on its own and others show up to reflect the degree of flow. I am fascinated by them for it reveals the state of consciousness and with all its vivid accuracy and what to do next. In my world, people are free to be how they love to be and they allow me to be how I love to be. And from this premise, we are surrounded by harmonious relationships in many shapes and forms. So it's interesting to see the kind of ideas that come up from having these conversations with these aspects of yourself which again, firmly and kindly, we're looking to integrate with and make peace with. These ideas seem to surface from the infinite world within. Subconscious mind speaks, bringing them to the surface, and then I'm able to identify with those associations, encourage them in my inner conversations, etc. And so some benefits that I get from working with this, number one is the changes that occur. And when the changes occur, it's easier for me to switch into whatever state of mind that I desire and observe the theater in real life play out from that state of mind, how others interact with me and how I interact with them. What I also notice is it's easier for me to maintain the state of mind because I've made peace with these thinking patterns. I notice that I'll meet people or people that I'll know will end up saying the same things that I had imagined in these sessions in my mind I look at it as a revelation of the degree of reconciliation within. And also another benefit from this is I live a lot more of a creative life. So life seems more poetic, theatrical, and automatic expression. It doesn't seem like I'm trying. Everything happens automatically more so. And I'm having a lot more fun, joy, bliss. And I seem to come up with all these creative ideas for travel, life experiences that I want to have. And as I've been encouraging all throughout the videos, we become childlike again. Life becomes more fun and playful. And in relation to instant magnetism, from that state of mind of fun and playful, you find yourself surrounded by people to enjoy these fun, playful experiences. And thus, automatically, you'll maintain the state of mind. And then through the suggestion of habit, repetition, and imitation from these experiences, it increases more so each day. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I have the ability to stimulate in my imagination different attributes in which I can engage with, make peace with, 
and enjoy the results from the reconciliation within be a conversation and dialogue with these attributes in a loving, fun, playful way. As a result, I feel more lighthearted, peaceful each day as life becomes more fun, flow, joyous, and playful. I realize these theatrical experiences of mine play out as the outer reflections as I encourage the ideal thinking and ways of being, which allows me to enter and maintain the states of mind that are reflective of interactions, conversations, and experiences with others that are in harmony with fun, joy, and play. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.